Choose life and live. Buy original. Be original. S O N. If you keep importing substandard products into Nigeria, we will not relent in our efforts to locate your product anywhere in the country. And guess what? We shall destroy them. Those were words from the Director General of the SON as officials of the agency embarked on a surprise visit to some outlets in Lagos. World Standards Day may have come and gone, but activities lined up to mark that day are ongoing as the Standards Organization of Nigeria concludes arrangement to deploy International Standard Organization ISO 3007. Details of this and other stories shortly. <laughs> My people, SON no be picking. SON na standards organization of Nigeria. You be importer, I be exporter. You don't register the market where you they sell for son. Standards organization of Nigeria, they call you now to come register with you they sell for Niger. This now to make everything where they Niger market get standard. If you never register, now be say, if them bab you, you go pay all the base and now your pockets go here ram. Shopali shopali, go register the market or products where you they sell for any SON way near you. For standard organization office, you go get correct information. We go help you know how you go take register. For more to revisit SON website will be www.son.gov.ng. Standard organization of Nigeria, una they improve life through standard. program and my pleasure bringing it to you. My name is Ifoma Okonkwo. If you are one of those who stock your shop with fake and substandard products, then the story will interest you. This is because the Standards Organization of Nigeria has embarked on unscheduled visits to markets across the country to remove such goods from the shelves. Officials of the agency were at some markets in Okota and Mushi in Lagos. Please take a look. These are outlets where goods are sold in Okota, Lagos. This visit by officials of the Standards Organization of Nigeria caught owners of the supermarket by surprise. Their mission was simple, identify goods that are fake or substandard, seize such goods, and upon laboratory test, if found to be substandard, destroyed. The affected markets were Daliko Rice Market in Isolo, Globus Supermarket on 69 Ago Palace Way in Okota and the Ojuwe Market in Mushi, all in Lagos. These products are smuggled in. Uh, first of all, they are prohibited. Uh, we suspect they are unwholesome because they do not have any, uh, they, have, they, they do not uh, meet the requirement of our NIS. Uh, and they are smuggled in. They, they, they didn't pass through the normal import procedure. Uh, they do not have import documents and they are not registered. Registration means that we, first of all, sample and test and, and pass it that yes, it's okay for consumption. And that's not the case with this. So uh, there are various brands. I think we have up to 20 brands. There is a government policy on fortification of sugar and flour with vitamin A. Vitamin A is to make the teeming population of Nigeria have healthy eye. This has been in place for so many years and that's why they have prohibited flowers and sugar coming in from other places because it's not in every country. And uh, without this fortification, children, adults, everybody partake in taking sugar and flour and we continue having blindness in the country. If you look at all the sugar imported, you will not see the emblem, the eye, which is synonymous with the sugar and flour manufactured in Nigeria. You will see the big eye showing you that it's fortified with vitamin A. And that is why we are mopping them up. That is a mandatory policy of federal government. The SON sealed some shops and evacuated some food items found to be substandard. These seized spaghetti were imported into the country. According to the head of the inspection team, Issa Suleiman, 
The raid is a deliberate and conscious exercise by the SON to protect consumers from what he described as dangerous products and encourage local manufacturers. We do not have any record of their registration because in the first place they are prohibited. So uh, since they are prohibited, that means you do not even have that opportunity to, to subject them to uh, regulation. So as far as we are concerned, uh, these products do not meet the requirements of our standards. We have sampled them in the past, we have done some tests on them, and so even I'm sure even the, uh, the, the owners, the retailers or the supermarket owners are aware that these products are not supposed to be on their shelf. So these are some of the questions they are going to tell us. They, they will answer those questions, how did they come about them? How were they able to bring them in without any documentation? Because so far we've been here for quite some time, no any document was shown to us of how these products got to Nigeria and on the shelf here. So we are putting this uh, warehouse on hold. You're watching Standard and You, and I still have Alaji Suleiman Issa with me in the studio to speak more on the agency's visit to some markets. You're welcome to the program, sir. Thank you very much. Sir, what informed the agency's decision to visit the markets? There were a lot of surveillance activities before visit to the market. Okay. Virtually everywhere was visited. That's without the knowledge of the traders. And uh, we tried to locate these products. But because the traders themselves know that these products are prohibited, they do not display the products. Mm -hmm. So in many cases, we had to pretend as buyers. And even when we do that, they ask us to bring the money. Okay. And so in certain cases, we gave them money before they brought out these products. So the products, especially like at the Lagos, Lagos Axis, where there is high level of awareness, and a particular day was fixed to carry out this activity nationwide in all the states okay. of the Federation, but particularly in uh, the border towns. And the outcome was massive because the certain states that are closer to the border, like Adamawa, Borno, Kano, Kazina, we found a lot of these products in the market. Wow. And they are not supposed to be there in the first place because of the safe and, uh, held, uh, safety and health uh, implications. Alaji, let me ask this first. What was the volume and the value of, you know, the seizure? Yeah, in, you know, like in the northern states, these places I mentioned, we found uh, up to, in some cases, uh, over in, in thousands, like the sugar. Sugar was found in thousands. Pesta uh, in some hundreds. And then we all these things were seized. The ones we found were seized. But we're also aware a lot of them are hidden. For example, in uh, Katsina, Kano, Sokoto, some of these things were found in nearby villages. So they keep them in some safe uh, warehouses at the villages, and then when the need arises, they use smaller vehicles, smaller buses to yeah. convey. Wow. And once they, com uh, they, they bring them, then you know they sell to consumers. Oh. Yes, so. so can you give us uh, more insights into the operations at the affected markets? Um, in Lagos, for example, we visited quite a number of uh, uh, supermarkets. Now, this is another finding. A lot of supermarkets are keeping products that they are not supposed to keep on the shelf. They have expired products, and these imported products too are on the shelf. So, a particular supermarket, but, but you know they don't keep them in cartons also. Okay. But we found a, a warehouse where we, we found almost a thousand of the pasta. And the, the brands, they, they have various imported brands. We have, we, the brands, have the, they, they have different, I think there are up to 20 different brands that were imported. And you know, um, they, they do not have one single paper to show for clearance. You know, it is prohibited, so they, 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 uh, they were not examined. So how did they come in? Yes. Did they come by trucks? So from the investigations that we also carried out, I think they bring these things in small quantities of five pieces, ten pieces at a time. And they use uh, other means like uh, motorcycle and some other this and that's across the border. Uh, the border. We were informed of a bus that dropped uh, a certain quantity of sugar 
that was in the night. We got there very early in the morning. And we had the cooperation of the uh, market executives. We searched all the shops. There was no, we didn't, we did not find one single sugar. But it came at night. Yes, it came at night. Wow. So, based on uh, inquiries, and uh, we interviewed one of the uh, shop owners. Unfortunately, she refused to, to talk on, on camera. But she told us that, look, what these people do is they arrange with the buyers, that's the traders. Wow. Each person has a certain quantity. So as soon as they come in, and in the first place, it's not even, it's not, it's not in a large truck, no. You know, as I said, there's so much awareness in Lagos. But we got even trucks in the north, you know. So when these things come, then the owners will also come around at the same time. Each person picks his own. And they make sure they do not keep these products in the shops. What strategies are you putting in place, you know, to reach all supermarkets in Lagos? The director general the, uh, directed all state offices to be fully uh, involved in these operations. So in Lagos, we have three state offices. All of them were fully involved. Okay. And then uh, we also have the, the uh, office of the uh, market surveillance in Lagos also. Okay. So you see there are, there are four teams. So for more than a week, consistently, we went to virtually all the markets in Lagos. Ido, my 12th, Daleko market, Mushim market, uh, Badagri. In fact, even all, all through, we went everywhere, including even Semi and, and Idiroko, you know? So these things were done. But even after you do a surveillance, you see these things, and on a second coming, you may not find them. You know, they are very, very, the traders are very, very sensitive on this test. Why? Because they know they are doing the wrong thing. They don't want to be caught with this product. So, um, on the day of the surveillance, I mean, uh, the, the rates, there's a nationwide rate, we went to a ma major uh, supermarket at uh, um, Ago Palace Way, and that was where we found thousands of uh, the pasta. We did not find sugar. From there, we went to Daleko. Earlier on, we saw evidence of the presence of these products, you know, some packets. But by the time we got there, we were unable to find these things. Then there's also a warehouse along the express, which we were, we were referred to. I think it's a call it a uh, Odolo, Odolo okay. Odolo warehouse. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But coincidentally, wherever we go, we also talk to the uh, market leaders. And they, oh, they confess to us, yes, these people do come around and discharge their goods and they go. And in some cases, it's even hawkers you find. So what we did, we now sensitize them and, uh, and, and, and insisted that they, they must make a pledge that they will not allow such act activities anymore. And that was what we did. From there, we, uh, we now went to Mushin Market. We went around the market, but we found only maximum of five cartons of pasta in, this shop, uh, in each of the shops that we read it, you know. So we evacuated whatever we saw and then we, we locked up the shop and invited the owners. And uh, even before we leave the market, they told us uh, that they are giving us guarantee that they will never allow such activities in Into their markets the market anymore. Exactly. So that is, uh, the, the, so what we are now going to do, which of course is part of the plan, is that immediately we, we conclude with the, the exercise we are going to go around the market to, you know, formally to, take, to talk to market leaders to ensure that they must not allow this, uh, these people who come around. And we understand some of them are even coming from uh, Cotonou. But after the raid, what were their reactions, both operators of the market and consumers? What were their reactions? Yeah, you see, one fact about uh, the whole thing is that these people are aware. So they were not really so surprised. surprised. They were not surprised. And that was also why they made sure at all times they, there's no evidence. You know, they try to clean up all evidences at all times. But at the same time, too, they want to sell. On their own part, of course, they want to make profit. But on the side of buyers, uh, maybe not knowing the, 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 healthy, uh, the, self, the, the safety and health implications, they, do not know. they want cheaper products. Yes. And these imported products are cheaper because they are not fortified, you know, they do not go through the quality assurance activities. Uh, customers should also beware of cheap products. This is a very big nation with so much potentials. 
why do we still have economic problems? It's because of some of these activities. So these uh, illegal activities actually impact so negatively on our economy. And once these things are minimized, because we know it's very, very difficult to bring it to zero level, but it can be minimized to, to the barest minimum. And this can only be done by all Nigerians, the traders, the government officials, and everybody. And that's the only way that the, our economy will improve, our children will have jobs to do, and all that. And also, you know, the local industry. Because it's a government policy to, 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 to uh, because what we do uh, in government is to support local manufacture. It is very, very important. And even where they are having some issues of quality, because we are consistently with them at all times, these things are always solved. We solve these problems, you know? Because it's not just the product, it is the processes, right from the raw materials. And we have the standards. And you know, the standards, it's stakeholder standards. Some only serves as the, the sectarian. So this, uh, the, our stakeholders are always with us, so they know what they are supposed to do. And there is also the feedback mechanism from the market, from consumers. You know, and I'll also encourage consumers, please, wherever you have issues with any product, please report, especially if it's a local product. You know, these are some of the, the, the issues we could take to the companies, and these things will be discussed during our routine inspections. And I will guarantee you that those things will, will be corrected. Yes. Thank so, you so thank much you for yeah. coming to the studio. Yeah. It's still standard and new. More stories after this break. As part of efforts to ensure the takeoff of emerging smart cities in Nigeria, the Standards Organization of Nigeria is concluding arrangements to deploy ISO Standard 3700 technology. It's an emerging instrument for the development of smart cities across the globe with guidelines in the management of smart cities. Smart mobility, through efficient public transportation, reduction in traffic, prevention and safe detection of accidents, smart and renewable energy deployment, security solutions, treatment of effluents and smart health care provisions are some of the issues that should interest us in the discussions at this location and others in the near future. The vexed issues of building collapses, fire disasters, flooding, improper waste management and the like would be adequately dealt with Director General of the Standards Organization of Nigeria, Osita Aboluma, explained that such standard will be in the overall interest of all, adding that it will make Nigeria cities smarter. We are deploying standards to, artic to articulate, to actively solve these challenges of, for instance, poor civil management, poor um, electricity, poor uh, road traffic, we deploy sensors, we deploy technologies to manage traffic, to manage energy, to generally discharge the core mandate of SO and that is improving life through standards. organization of Nigeria converged on day day market in Abuja to solicit the support of dealers of building materials and block molders on the need to embrace quality and standards. The sensitization exercise was at the instance of the agency with the theme the nation shuns substandard products. This meeting is one of the fora initiated by the standards organization of Nigeria to engage stakeholders in its fight against fake and substandard products. The FCT coordinator, while reiterating the mandate of the agency, noted that it is the responsibility of the Standards Organization of Nigeria to protect the lives of Nigerians, and as such, stakeholders must comply with the law, adhere to specified measurement, and produce quality building materials during production. This responsibility of uh, this organization of ours of ensuring that customers get value for their own money 
is not an absolute responsibility of the organization, but this responsibility is rather collective. If and every citizen who has the interest of this nation at heart must, I mean must, and I repeat it, he must collaborate with this standard organization of Nigeria for us to achieve this mandate. Let us sit down and listen together. Let us see how we can save this nation by showing some standard products. Some dealers also comment on the essence of the forum. Stationing your people there at the point of manufacturing we make the job easier for you people. The sensitization workshop, which held simultaneously across the country, also saw stakeholders in the building industry in Ota, Ogun State, chart a way forward on how to reduce the prevalence of building collapse. SON from now will be visiting construction sites whereby any materials of construction that is used in the site that is found to be substandard will be seized at that site and the construction will be stopped. SON is going to partner with them, we're going to work with them, we're going to work in collaboration with their unions, their executive, and ensure that there is a change attitude in the building sector. The SON says it will not compromise on its commitment to standard, especially in the building sector. This meeting provided a platform for freight forwarders, importers, exporters, clearing agents, manufacturers, and other relevant players in the maritime domain to chat ways forward on how to promote their businesses in line with the provisions of the executive order of the federal government. The director general of the Standards Organization of Nigeria, who was represented at the forum, said that unpatriotic businessmen are beginning to declare false documents, avoid inspection of goods on arrival, and deliberately refuse to comply with import and export laws. Hence the need to hear from stakeholders. Our SONCAP scheme is an offshore conformity assessment program. It is an opportunity offered by SON to anybody who wants to import any product in this country that you must first of all get in touch with our overseas accredited agents all over the world. We have the Intertech, we have the uh, CCIC of China, we have the SGS, and then we have the Cotecna. These are four world-class testing companies that have been engaged by the Standards Organization of Nigeria to ensure that goods coming into this country comply with the requirements of the standard. And so if anybody takes, makes use of the opportunity of making sure that what you want to bring into this country passes through these our agents, you will be sure that you'll be properly guided. And when the goods come into this country, we'll give them smooth access into the country. That is the ease of doing business. He also reminded the gathering that the agency will not relent in its effort in checking illicit trading. This, he emphasized, is aimed at putting a stop to the importation and distribution of fake goods through unauthorized routes. They have not been tested, they have not been validated in terms of their characteristics. And that is why SON is saying that we cannot allow non-compliant trade in Nigeria. Anybody who wants to import must import along our um, conformity assessment programs. The representative of the Director General urged the players to register their products with the agency for traceability, get acquainted with the sun cap and man cap schemes, and always seek clarification on issues about the schemes with the agency. Hello and good to have you on the feedback segment of the program. I am Halimot Osifo. I'd like to inform you that Sun Edo State's office no longer covers for Delta State. We now have an office at Delta State located at Plot 97, Block 2 and 4, GRA Phase 3, Icourt Road, Asaba. Today on the feedback segment, we will be looking at some of the frequently asked questions about the Standards Organization of Nigeria, such as what is the SON about? The SON, that is the Standards Organization of Nigeria, is a government agency saddled with the responsibility of protecting Nigerians from fake and substandard products. Another question is, how can one identify products certified by the SON? Products certified by the SON can be recognized by the certification marks inscribed on them or their labeling 
information such as the man cap and sun cap logo and this brings us to the next question what's a sun cap and man cap SUNCAP is the Sanders Organization of Nigeria Conformity Assessment Program, which is an offshore conformity assessment program for products imported into the country. Why the MANCAP is the mandatory conformity assessment program to ascertain the quality of products manufactured in Nigeria. What is NIS certification? The NIS certification is the award given to locally manufactured products after passing through rigorous analytical process. The recipients of the NIS mark are consistently monitored to ensure that they retain their quality level, otherwise the award is withdrawn. How can a company be certified? For a company to be certified, it must address all the requirements of the standard being certified to. You can visit our website www.sun.gov.ng for more information about that. And that's it on the feedback segment of the program. You can call us or send us a message on the number 0705-972-4455. Follow us on Facebook at Standard and You, Instagram and Twitter at Standard and You underscore. You can also send a mail to the address the standard and you at gmail. Com. Join us next week for another interesting episode. Enjoy the rest of the day.